What's up, guys? Welcome to my first YouTube video for my new channel, Bluff Lures. Let's do this. All right, what's up guys? Welcome to my very first YouTube video for my new channel, Bluff Lures. My name is Dan. I am an avid fisherman, professional fabricator, and self-taught lure designer. For the past five years, I have been teaching myself everything I can about how to make these kinds of lures. And it led me to have some really amazing experiences, not just making them, but also getting out in the water and fishing with them. And I wanted to start sharing these experiences with you guys and offer a window into my world of designing, making, and fishing. Um, and yeah, I also wanted to give an eye to the future. So one of the things, or rather the mission of this channel, is to show what's possible by using the creative mind and the process um, to design some really great lures. And I would love to give you guys the opportunity to do that as well. So part of the thing I'm going to do is once all of the lures you'll see on my channel get perfected is I'm going to offer molds, the same molds that I'll be using to make them, for you guys to be able to go out and make them. And I'm also going to do some lure drops eventually on a website that's going to come in the future where I'll make a batch of them and send out some notifications and you guys can get your hands on. So, yeah, with all that out of the way, this first video is going to be a summary of this lure, which is my 8-inch bunker swim bait. It's taken me about six years, I think, to uh, kind of get right. And it's a really great summary of everything you're going to find on my channel. So I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please give me a like and subscribe. Um, this is my very first YouTube video. I'm really excited to be here and I wanna keep this going. So it would mean a lot to me. So let me go show you how this all started. All right, so this is where the story starts. This is uh, 2015 in Western New York. I had recently bought a Hobie Revolution kayak and I started exploring the waters around Jamaica Bay, Raritan Bay and the New York Harbor. And man, I was so surprised that there was such an abundant amount of aquatic life. And I fell in love with striped bass fishing. Um, it was awesome. The first few years of just getting on the water and exploring and um, trying to put the pieces together were, it's just a time I'll never forget. Um, I caught a lot of fish, mostly schoolies. I was doing a lot of daytime fishing with some of these smaller baits. And listen, there's nothing wrong with these. They are awesome. They work. They catch fish. And it led to me getting some really amazing experiences out on the water. And yeah, after a couple years of this, uh, you know, naturally I wanted to improve. I wanted to try and start catching bigger fish. And this is when I decided I was going to combine my professional career and passion of being a designer and builder with my new love of striped bass fishing. So I thought long and hard. I was like, what do I want to make? And one thing I did not see on the market was a larger bait that mimicked a bunker or a main haven. And here you'll see some awesome footage I got out in Cape Cod and some bunker schooling up. Um, now, granted, these are some smaller juvenile bunker, uh, a little bit bigger than what we call peanut bunker, but gives you an idea. Uh, pretty abundant forage fish. And so, yeah, I set off trying to make one. And as an amateur, not knowing what the heck I was doing, I just made one out of clay. This is Sculpey that I just sculpted into a shape of a bunker and put a hook at the top. Um, and I was like, all right, let's throw some, let's make a mold, let's throw some soft plastic in it and see what happens. And I did that. Um, and let's just say the results were not that great. Uh, this thing <laughs> barely swam. Actually, it swam for like five minutes. And then the drag from the tail literally just pulled the uh, soft plastic off of this hook. But I was not going to be deterred. Uh, I went back, and this time in the computer, and 3D modeled a bunker and ended up getting everything 3D printed. So for this design, I separated the head and the tail. The tail is going to be a hot injection molded soft plastic, and the head is going to be a urethane. So yeah, this is me 
trying to do my first two-part silicone mold. Here I'm packing it in some clay and same thing with the tail. Um, yeah, I use YouTube for this. I tried to learn everything I could about making molds and the different materials. I mean, I scoured YouTube and read as much as I could um, and tried to learn about this process. And it was a lot of fun, actually. So yeah, here's the successful silicone mold for the head. I learned how to mix epoxy to make the injection molds for the tails. And I learned how to melt the plastic salt and inject it. And yeah, here's what I ultimately came up with. It's an 8-inch bunker with a urethane head. There's a lead weight that's towards the belly of that head. And a soft plastic tail. And let me tell you, catching a huge fish on a lure that you designed and made is an amazing feeling. So, here we go. I'll show you how it happened. I'm fishing with a custom bunker I made right here. Designed it this winter. So obviously this lure doesn't have a lip on it. So um, here I'm just giving it a jigging motion up and down. And um, it's actually something that I still try to make my lures do to this day uh, to have this kind of action. Not ready yet? All right. Something worth noting as this fish gets pulled in. Um, take a look at where that lure is. It inhaled it. Ooh. Hey, baby. What's up, girl? I've missed you all winter. Oh, you like that bunker? Yeah. I think that was at least four or five years ago at this point, and I, I still think about that fish all the time. All right, baby, let's go. Oh, all right, I know you want to go. All right, so I'm officially hooked, no pun intended. So, Later. yeah, I was like, let's keep going. So I started conceptualizing a different or rather an evolution of that bait. So, yeah, here I started sketching out um, a new version. This time I wanted to incorporate a lip. I wanted to try to get this thing to kind of swim on its own. And I was also trying to figure out how to attach that tail to the head, which, as you'll see, really was the hardest part of this whole thing. But, you know, as I was doing my research, I came across this unclassified document um, from the Department of the Navy. And this is really interesting. Now, I'm not smart enough to understand the majority of this, but what I did take from it was the concept of vortexes. Um, it provided some really great visual documents and just some graphs and charts like you're seeing here that um, showed what's happening, you know, in the water actually when the fish is swimming and the vortexes and vibrations and whatnot that it puts out. And I decided I wanted to try to recreate that in a lure. So I started by separating the head and the tail in a natural place right behind the collar um, where the fish becomes more flexible. And from here, I set off trying countless methods to attach that tail to the head. Um, that proved to be the hardest thing. You know, a hook and a barb would not have worked. It's just too big, and it needed a different method. So after a lot of trial and error, um, you know, this is the detail I came up with. So soft plastic tail, buoyant urethane head, and all you need is a fish hook, and you can take the tail out. So embedded into the tail is a nylon mesh as well as that plastic component that has some grooves in it that correspond to the grooves in the head. So all you have to do is just push it in and clicks into place. And so for the swimming action, uh, this also took a lot of trial and error with the lip and the weight and the tie-on location, but ultimately this is uh, how I got it swimming. And yeah, about those vortexes, uh, take a look at this. The bottom image here is a still frame from the lure swimming, and the top is from that unclassified document. And yeah, I was really happy to see that the vortexes are forming uh, like I wanted them to. And yeah, here's some uh, video of it swimming. So this is the jigging action in it. Um, this is one of my preferred ways to fish this lure. I get so many hits on the drop, uh, that quick 
sweep up seems to uh, attract him, and that slow drop down really seems to draw the hit. Yeah, it looks pretty real. All right, let's go catch some fish with it. So I do a lot of my fishing out in western New York, and one of the great ways to fish this lure is, is trolling it. So here I'm out on my Hobie Revolution kayak, and um, yeah, this is a beautiful early spring morning. You see there, I just had one hit on this thing. Yeah, these fish can get pretty big, and um, they can turn your kayak around really easily. That's something I've learned is being able to control that kayak is important because you can lose a fish pretty easy. But luckily, I get this one in. So here's another day out in western New York. Um, the fish are pretty deep here. Uh, I'm fishing in about, well, it's about 40 feet of water and I'm trolling about 25 feet. I have, I think, a two ounce weight that's attached above my leader uh, with the barrel swivel. And, um, yeah. There we go. Not this time, buddy. This time. Ah, this time. Oh. Stay in the water. Right. Whew. <laughs> All right. See you later. Yes. Number two. <laughs> All right. So one of the other ways that I was playing around with fishing this lure was as a topwater. Um, taking the lip off and just really making this thing float, just popping it back. You <laughs> <laughs> on the top water. All right, so just here's a couple notable catches I had over the past couple seasons. Um, I think some of these fish were caught jigging it. Uh, the lure fish is great in a slow retrieve with the sweeping motion up and down. Um, and it's proven to fish really well in the early spring when we get the arrival of Bunker and also in the fall. Actually, I've had luck with it most times of the year. It's proven to be really effective. Yeah, and you can tell I really like this chartreuse color. It gotcha. has worked. Um, gotcha, and, buddy. you know, when something works, well, let's just say it stuck with me. 
I'm gonna start trying some other colors, but this is just really proven to work well. So yeah, guys, that's this video. If you liked it, please give me a like and a follow. I'm gonna be making a lot more videos in the future, um, a lot of how-to videos, and yeah, just more videos catching great fish. You were caught before, look at that. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Give me that like, please follow and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Big belly, what have you been eating? All right. Bye-bye. All right, see if I can jig another one up, actually.